It's all over here in Crow Park. Mayo have lost the All-Ireland semi-final. Dublin's drive for five still is, and I'm joined by Ross Munley. Now, we were watching that game, and Mayo were superb in the first half. They really put Dublin to the pin of their collar. But you're probably going to agree with me when I say this, that the seven games in eight weeks probably didn't help them today. Yeah, no, it's, I've made this point on off the ball breakfast a couple of weeks ago that the, the fixture congestion definitely wasn't going to play on Mayo's on, uh, to their advantage going into the game in Killarney. Uh, I thought that fixture really in terms of Mayo's performance, you need to wipe it clear because it wasn't an accurate reflection of where they were. And I think the second half today was the same. They did their best for 35 minutes, but playing seven out of eight weeks, is, particularly against a team who's had a much easier run in in terms of rest time and recuperation and so on it's not a fair fight and it's just it's just their victim of the the way the fixtures are at the moment in the GA it's nothing to do with Dublin it's just um, Mayo went through the qualifiers unfortunately uh, taking your medicine in the qualifiers and getting to the Super 8s you should have a break before you go into that intensity but it's just not there at the moment and Mayo fell short in my opinion because of that but uh, Dublin were incredible value for their win in the end especially when you watch that Mayo performance in the first half their tempo they had Dublin's number figured out and we were both talking about the kickouts they were both going for long kickouts and stuff but yet Mayo had the number on them for that first half yeah they did and I suppose in a situation that they were in when they started get, getting on top and they started winning some of those key battles you know they were really trying to see it out till half time I had a jotted just on a, on a note coming into half time around 27 minutes I started to notice some Mayo players going with their hands on their knees and looking like they were breathing heavy and that they were starting to lag a little bit and I, I think that continued they got to half time but they didn't really come out in the second half partly because of fatigue but then also you have to credit Dublin they were absolute marvellous champions in the second half the first seven minutes of the, of the of the second half almost had the game over in Dublin's favour and you never had a, a, a sense that Mayo would have the legs to come back and and do damage the far end and Dublin ran out easy victors and fully deserve fully deserve um, their victory it was fantastic performance yeah because when you were watching them you could argue was that Mayo were so good in the first half they didn't allow Dublin play or did Dublin just turn up the heat because like you said that period those first 10 minutes in the second half was ball burst game over like those goals everything and you could just see even though Mayo in fairness they did get a goal afterwards but still you just knew at that point that was Dublin being Dublin and they were doing it beautifully yeah I think it was something like 1-3 1-4 without a without reply at the start of the second half and they had turned the two point deficit into a big cushioned advantage at that stage and credit Conor Callan he came to life Kieran Kilkenny really started getting into the game he started assisting big scores he gave the final pass even though he had been fouled he got the offload to Fenton who managed to find the net as well so their big players came to the fore Paul Mannion got a brilliant score from maybe 40 yards out almost on the sideline here so it started to come together for Dublin but because this kept at it and they got a couple of things right at the start of the second half in particular they changed up their approach on Mayo's kick out rather than pushing really deep in on top of Rob Henley that sort of with, with less numbers than the first half uh, they tried to force Dublin to go along and they used more numbers out around the middle of the field and they really dominated uh, for large spells of that first stage after half time where Mayo couldn't get the ball past the, the halfway line remember with, with 32 minutes on the clock in the second half I think Mayo had only scored a goal and one point so that will tell you the dominance of Dublin but it also tells the story to be fair uh, Mayo ran out of legs and I genuinely think the fixtures uh, do not lend to teams coming through the qualifiers. Particularly, I know you could make a comparison with Tyrone, but particularly for Mayo, because all of their qualifier games were incredibly difficult. They went to extra time. They were all do or die games where they, they never really got a, a break through the qualifiers. But listen, that's all done and dusted now. Dublin are in an All Ireland final, and this team is within a hair's breadth now of, of proving that they are the best of all time. And that was going to be my next question. Tomorrow we have Kerry Tyrone. Uh, briefly, what kind of game do you think we're going to expect there and who's going to come out on top there? Yeah, I think when you look at this Tyrone team, in the last three games, so in, in, in their last... Well, well, we won't count 
last week's game against Dublin because it was it was a, a reserve team that they, they ran out. But in their last three competitive games, the, the game against Cavan to get to the Super 8s and their first two Super 8s games, uh, of their starting team, uh, 10 of those players played in the same positions for all three games. They had another three players who played all three games, but just in different positions. So that gives them with 13 players who have played in the last three games, which is phenomenal consistency, particularly those who've all started in the same position. So I think Mickey Hart has found his best team. I think he's found a little bit of chemistry up front with uh, he has McCurry, he has McShane, he has Matty Donnelly, he has Petey Hart. So he has scoring threats. I think they'll keep it incredibly tight tomorrow. I think Colm Kavanagh will do his thing and shut down in front, shut down uh, the space in front of the Kerry full forward line. And there's a really, really big question asked about this Kerry team tomorrow. Yes, they're up and at it. Yes, they play some fabulous football. And they have some brilliant young players. Will those brilliant young players have the key to unlock Tyrone tomorrow? I'm not so sure. It's very, very, very hard to call. And knowing Mickey Hart, knowing the consistency that he has got in the team, I think Tyrone might just be one step too far for for Kerry this year. Obviously, we don't know the answer to that yet, but let's just pretend... We don't know the answer, and we had a choice of both uh, Kerry and Tyrone in the final against Dublin. Yeah, Can yeah, any of them yeah. stop the drive for five? Yeah, just thinking about it. Tomorrow's game is going to be. It, it's going to be. It's going to go down to the wire, and I have an inkling that Tyrone will win it. But I think of the two teams, Kerry are probably better equipped to do more damage against Dublin and I think the All-Ireland fi- I think it would be an unbelievable All-Ireland final from a footballing perspective if it was Kerry Dublin I think Kerry because of the way they play and they'd be able they would be allowed to play a little bit more in the rhythm against Dublin than they will be tomorrow against their own so listen it's it's I was confident Dublin would win today I'm very unsure about tomorrow but kind of thinking Tyrone and a, but I do think a Dublin Kerry Dublin Kerry final would be an unbelievable occasion, and I think it would be a brilliant game of football. And that's what uh, that's what all us neutrals at this stage want. And uh, is that your way of saying, though, even if Kerry gets the final, they can't stop the drive for five either? I think it, uh, I think uh, I'm really putting you on the spot now. No, you are, but <laughs> and, and it's it's an interesting one because I think I need to see Kerry come up with the answers tomorrow when they don't have the space against their own and when the Mickey Hart machine tries to squeeze every little bit of space out of this pitch here tomorrow what way or what how's Clifford going to adjust his game tomorrow how's Sean O'Shea going to make sure he gets on the ball and make penetrating runs and how's Ganey going to react with maybe a sweeper in front of him for the full 70 minutes and we know what Stephen O'Brien is capable of doing when he's in a one-on position uh, playing at wing forward he'll pick scores off all day long and David Morn from my experience playing with him at the international rules an unbelievable kick passer but where's he going to have to kick that tomorrow that's what I want, I'm really enthous- enthusiastic about tomorrow from this Kerry perspective to see with the challenge in front of them how are they going to come up with the answers and create that bit of space that a lot of teams can't do against their own and if Kerry want to win in All-Ireland they're going to have to come up with some answers tomorrow Well, Baila, Fekal, Ross Munley we're Amelia Maha, but there you go, there you have it we know who one of the teams is going to be in the All-Ireland final who's going to meet them all will be revealed very, very soon